Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Um, this video is going to talk about a, um, a topic about size, muscle size, how big a person is. Um, there are a couple people uh, who, very few, um, I love the following that I've built on my channel because it's not just a whole bunch of subscribers who are, who are diluted, who don't even track or keep track. I mean, sure, I'll have some, you know, um, but my audience is engaged in my videos. So I have a very good, um, I, have a, I have a good following that's growing, but it's also engaged. Um, because you guys know the content that I provide is not only evidence-based, but heck, I'm probably almost like, uh, prognostic in a lot of the things that I talk about that will later be verified um, or confirmed in future studies. You're getting literally, you're not getting cutting edge, you're getting like before cutting edge, you know what I mean? So this stuff could be like, you know, groundbreaking, game changing kind of content. Look, it's hit or miss. Some of the stuff that I say may not be confirmed later, it's more like theoretical, but here's the thing. I'm very selective and careful with what I the information that it provides. So if it's not later confirmed to be true, guess what? It was information that was low risk anyway and there was nothing to lose by, by incorporating it. If anything, look at it as it was just a variety that was added to one's you know, uh, health and fitness lifestyle. That said, let me, I just preface the video, but basically this video is talking about uh, me not being big enough, okay? Um, I recently and in the past, when I would post pictures of me at competitions, people would, most people would, you know, have some um, sentiment or, you know, empathy for me not doing well and stuff. Here's the thing. I'm a pro. Okay? I got my pro card in 2009. Um, I got up to 181 pounds in 2007. Um, and so I know how to get big. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm more of a Frank Zane kind of a physique guy and here's why. I've, re I've read some of his books and he actually, Joe, Joe Weider would tell him, Frank, you need to get big, you need to add muscle and all that stuff. And he actually, Frank Zane wrote that in his books. Finally, he gave in. He started to add muscle, guess what? He started to experience setbacks, injuries, low back problems, you name it. And, and his physique didn't look as good and he started to lose some symmetry and he actually didn't even do as well. He actually did his best when he was um, a smaller physique, you know, like he, um, you know, so he did his best when he did it his way. And so I got real big one time in my life, but it actually kind of scared me because it was like, you know, when I was growing up, I used to, I used to always try and gain weight, and I, I couldn't gain weight, and I would do everything I could. I would literally eat garbage food. This was before I became vegan. I used to eat like a lot of carbs and fats and ice cream to get bigger, and um, and and it and it and it never happened. Of course, I was younger. You know, youth can do that, but when I finally bulked up, it scared me because I was like, oh crap, I can actually become fat. Um, and, and, and look, it's, that, that's, that was my honest, and it was true. Um, I gained a lot of mass, but also gained fat mass with it. So it was a struggle to figure out how do you put on muscle? I mean, is, is it possible to put muscle on without fat? And I thought, no, you, you, when you, whenever you gain muscle, you're gonna gain fat with it. Wrong. If you look at my video, In Body 570 Body Fat Test, that's, that's, that's objective evidence that I've actually done it. I've always shown it visually, but now I've actually been able to quantify it objectively. And so um, I'll have some people who say, yeah, you look like you know crap or whatever. You need to gain 10 pounds of muscle. Well, here's the thing. Let me break down the science for you. See, you know, that to me is bullying. That's like fear mongering and trying to like intimidate, you know, trying to play the, the bulk mass card. Here's the problem with that. Number one, I can gain mass easy no problem no problem the thing is is when you get anabolic I have a lot of theories and one of them is you could potentially and some studies have suggested this particularly with animal protein is that you can overexpress that anabolic expression so you can get real big and add body fat but you could possibly possibly be also 
uh, raising IGF-1 levels, which can potentially increase cancer risk. Now that's, that's scary stuff, but look folks, that's, whether that's true or not, I certainly don't want to take that chance regardless of the fact. So my main, my main motto is focusing on adding quality mass, so healthy muscle. What is healthy muscle? Well, it's not overexpressing the anabolic response. It's kind of a balance between catabolic and anabolic. And what does that? Concurrent training and having a optimal body composition, having a lower body fat and a higher muscle mass. Not being emaciated or, or, or anorexic looking. Believe me, I'm, I'm a big fan of adding muscle, but quality muscle. And I may not look big in some of the videos, not big enough, at least to subjectively, visually. People might say, you can get bigger, you're not big enough. That's BS, and let me explain why. Science, my friends. Fat-free mass index, but beyond that, my body mass index is always 24, and, and sometimes it gets up to like 24.9, and it's actually been 25.1. That puts me at overweight, but my body fat's single digits. What does that indicate? I have above average muscle for my frame. People may not like to hear it because visually they're saying you look small. I just gave you, I just gave you undoubtedly and, and unequivocal proof. And, and this is science, you know, that's when, when somebody says, you know, through, you know, vi, like you look small, that's bro science. Trust me. I'm a personal trainer certified with the highest level of organization, American College of Sports Medicine, who also has a journal. They actually published a peer-reviewed accredited journal, Medicine and Science and Sports Exercise. I, I didn't say that right. Medicine and Science and Sports Exercise. I think I did. Anyway, um, and I also have a master's degree, and I've actually published research in the top journals in my field, the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research and the Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. So. Don't believe the bro science naysayers. Um, you know, the, if you want to get big and add fat, it's easy. And if you're not getting big, it's either you're one of the few who has been blessed with a great metabolism, and instead of trying to get bigger, you should just you should gain muscle. And if you're not big, trust me, you are big. It's trust me. Visually, you know, things look different visually. You see people who look huge in clothes when when you see them like changing in the locker room at a gym. They look smooth, and their like their bellies bigger than you might have expected. Love handles, you name it. You know what I mean? So, you know, I actually look bigger when I'm not in clothes, and especially if I'm pumped up. So the point is, is that don't believe that garbage that people spew out. And I haven't been winning lately because the culture has changed in physique. It it was supposed to be about symmetry, conditioning, adequate muscle, and athletic conditioning. It seems to have some of the guys who have beaten me have been, have been like basically bigger than some bodybuilders. And don't forget that I'm competing in the pro division. You think it's easy to win a pro show? Try it. Trust me. I've won many amateur shows and I didn't even look as good as I do now. I actually look better now than I did before and I'm not winning because I'm competing in pro shows, dude. Pro shows. Okay. Like I was saying, you know, people don't realize that I am a pro. I earned my pro card in 2009. I paid my dues. Um, I've actually placed as high as second in a pro physique show. So, you know, quite honestly, and, and that was actually in 2013, and then quite honestly, I, I, I feel I should have got first, but look, second happened. That's what, it's what it was. Um, but the point being is that some of the best bodybuilders out there never won shows. The pros, like, you know, back then, you can name some amazing, like, was it Serge Nubre? Uh, a lot of people thought he should have won that Olympia when, when he was with competing against Arnold and uh, I think it was, I forget who else was, it was him and, and Lou Ferrigno. A lot of people thought he should have won. Um, now, I know, look, that just proves the point that it, it, is, it is a subjective sport. And same thing in 1980 when Arnold won that, uh, his, um, what is it, seventh Olympia, he came back, you know, and he was, he was not very conditioned and he didn't even have the size that he had it. And it was, it was that show in Australia, the Olympia. And it was like, I think it was like one of the biggest um, protests or like outrages by the audience. I think they were like throwing chairs and it was pretty bad. Um, and I think later he admitted that he, he, he personally felt that, you know, he, he didn't have the best physique or whatever. But 
but he was reputable. It was a political kind of a thing. This sport is very political, okay? I'm not saying that that's the reason why I haven't been winning. But when we say winning, you have to understand the context. Is it amateur or is it pro? If I was competing in the open, there's no doubt I'd be placing higher and probably winning a lot of shows. No question about it. And if not, I'd still be placing higher, okay? I'm competing with pros, folks. And like I said, the culture has changed a little bit. So, you know, I like what I'm bringing, and here's the reality. My muscle is above average, okay? It's above average. And, and, and maybe to pro bodybuilders and pro physique athletes, it probably looks below average. But compared to everyday people, particularly who are the same height as me, five, seven and a half or so, and I'm, I'm like carrying a, what, 158 to 160 pounds in single digit body fat, it's like I'm pure muscle, okay? I'm pure muscle. And, uh, and what's crazy is this person who left a comment on my video, I actually posted two pictures at the beginning of the video. And it's like I was like literally jacked up and lean at the same time and actually saying I'm not big enough. It's such a futile, um, it, it's such a shallow vanity bro science argument. I just gave you the facts. Fat-free mass index, which I didn't elaborate on, and I'm going to elaborate. My fat-free mass index is actually above average. I'm like in the top 80 to 90 percentile in terms of muscle for my frame, okay? I actually carry a lot of muscle in my upper thighs. So I'm not top-heavy like a lot of uh, physique competitors who don't work legs, okay? Which actually there's an organization that has a show uh, in Austin and a couple other places where they're actually allowing... Um, the higher shorts and, and athletics. So actually I'm looking forward to it possibly competing in that organization again so I can actually display my legs. But the point being is that, you know, I got plenty of size for my frame and I love the fact that I have that focus on conditioning without sacrificing excessive muscle, okay? And my symmetry, I've always been told I have good symmetry. So it's not, it's, see people try and like, minimize those other elements by focusing on just one thing, size. But, you know, if you ask a poll of the general public, most people don't want that bulky, huge, you know, uh, stocky, uh, squatty look. You know, people want that nice, small waist and that V taper, okay? Could I be a little bigger? Sure, but I'm still training. Uh, it takes time to add muscle, folks. It's not an easy thing, especially when you're actually trying to uh, also be lean at the same time. I can add muscle and fat and I would be huge, but who wants that? Because my waist would also expand as well. So I'm optimizing body composition and that's why I do it the way I do it. 